peace for the broken in the light. Am I hurting? Am I sad? Should I say or should I go? I've forgotten how to tell. Did I Episode 2, The Three Stooges. Okay, all done. But you be careful from now on, alright? In a clinic in District 19 of Oriental Town, Lechi has just finished putting the ba a bandage on a young girl. It's a peaceful afternoon. All her patients that morning were old men and women. The girl she just finished bandaging is much younger. Thank you very much. She grins and gives Lechi a deep bow, her tail flipping her tail flipping up and over her back and her ears pointing almost straight down. Youth is no excuse for recklessness, okay? Yes, ma'am. I'll be more careful from now on. She shows no sign of comprehension and just scratches her nose. Her friend Sabaki grabs her by the shoulder and gives her a, fr a friendly shake. You should listen to her, Makoto. You're always pushing yourself too hard. <laughs> Stop it! Oh, come on. This is hardly the time to be blushing. She sighed. The girl was just relieved her injury wasn't serious. Her friend didn't think she was looking at the situation appropriately. Why on earth did you do a thing like that? Let me explain what she's talking about. That day, the three girls, now in Lighty's clinic, had headed for District 19's most famous Chinese restaurant, each one of them clutching a flyer with a tempting offer. The girls were heading to the restaurant to take on the challenge written in the flyer, eat over 2,000 pounds of food. They ate boiled gyoza, spring rolls, meat buns, spicy shrimp, and much, much, much more, and they finished off with desserts. Now let's get back to the story. <laughs> Well, I'd eaten a whole lot, so I figured I'd just burn those calories away. Well, okay, I can understand that, but climbing a tree? Isn't there a better way to burn calories? Tree climbing is so dangerous. Sabaki sighs. She is a straight-A student and the daughter of an important noble family. Raised as a child of privilege, she tries to live her life as an example to others. Mikoto, on the other hand, is a simple, energetic girl. She rarely thinks anything through, and her often childlike behaviour puts her at odds with Subaki frequently. But whatever she might lack in intellectual sophistication, she makes up for it with physical strength and dexterity. Climbing the tree by the side of the road was no trouble at all. She chose the thickest branch which she could find to swing off of. Things were going rather well. But how could I have known the branch would break? And so with a loud, loud crack, the branch broke just as Makoto was in the middle of a huge swing. Even in mid-air, Makoto had excellent reflexes, and in an instant she had her balance back and was preparing to land, but... That child was standing right where she hoped to land. At the last moment, she twisted her body out of the way, avoiding the child, but landed hard on her ankle, twisting it. You are unbelievable. Makoto was too preoccupied with someone else to hear the sarcasm in Tsubaki's voice. What about you, Noel? The girl named Noelle snaps out of her daydream with a gasp and looks up at Makoto. This girl, Noelle Vermillion, is, un is unquestionably a classmate of Makoto and Sabaki. But no matter how you look at it, her body doesn't look like she's even half as old as the other two, despite the fact they're all the same age. Just to make things clear, room for growth and growth potential are not synonymous. Now let's get back to the story. Uh, um, Makoto? Noelle whispers something. What are you whispering about? Makoto whispers too, but even her whisper is loud. How can I be like Miss Lychee? What? At first, Makoto had no idea what Noelle was talking about, until she followed her friend's gaze to Lychee's chest. I don't know. Why don't you ask her yourself? Huh? No! No, 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 no! I can't possibly do that! Huh? Like she doesn't understand why the two girls are staring at her, staring at her and whispering. What are your friends up to? Adolescent drama, I imagine. Not satisfied with her answer, Like she looks at Noelle and Makoto again, deep in thought. That's it. I knew there was something. The three girls look at Like she, startled by the sound of her voice. Why are you girls dressed like that? <laughs> Aren't you girls from the library? <laughs> We, we're students from the military academy, right? What she said. Uh, but I could have sworn you were. Shut up! Huh? What? What happened? Hey, booby lady, Tao's here to study. 
Oh my goodness, I lost track of the time. <sighs> that was close. That was close. Women always want to look young. Of course, we've got some pictures that show they don't. So, that's about it. I'm trying very hard to help turn Tao into a distinguished vigilante. So I'm making her study all sorts of things. Yep. I'm in the middle of studying to be a great vigilante. Studying to be... a vigilante? Noelle looks confused. Oh, yeah. I heard the test to become a vigilante is very, very hard. R really? I heard only the top 20% of the people who graduate the military academy even pass the test. What? Are you serious? Knock it off, Makoto. There's no test to become a vigilante, Noelle. You need to stop letting Makoto fool you like that. So, there's no test? Makoto! <laughs> Makoto's whistling and playing dumb. Well, we shouldn't get in their way. Can you walk, Makoto? Yeah, I think I'm okay. Makoto tilts her head to the side and ponders. Hey, okay. she treated me for free, so why don't we help Tao study to show our thanks? I don't remember saying it was free. How about it, Tao? Sure, I don't mind. Okay, then it's a deal. Makoto, you're always so pushy. What kind of studying are you doing? Hmm... Today's theme is, um, I forgot. It's what kind of world do we live in? Teach, Teach me, me Tabaki. Okay, why is everyone looking at me? I was wondering why I went silent for a second. Because you have the best grades, Tsubaki. My grandma says, the person with the best grades should be the person who teaches. Agreed. How oh, fine. <clears throat> well then, can they even hear me? What's a hierarchical city? Okay then. <clears throat> Alright, what's the name of the city where you and Miss Lychee live? Hmm. I don't know. This is no good. Wow. She's dumber than I thought. Oh well. Okay, Tao. This city, the city where Blaze Blue takes place, is called Kagutsuchi. Oh ho, Kanazuchi. Uh, no, Kagutsuchi. Officially, it's known as the Thirteenth Hierarchical City of Kagutsuchi. Oh. Hmm. I guess I should make a note of that. Noel, you didn't know that? <laughs> uh, of course. Not thirteenth Heraclical City. That that's a lot of big words. What does it mean? Uh, it seems pretty clear to me. It means it's the thirteenth hierarchical city. Did you know that we live in the hierarchical cities because of the Dark War? Yeah, but Tao lives on the ground. What? She is from the Kaka Clan. Their uh species can survive very high concentrations of Seether. I see. All right, moving on. During the Dark War, mankind developed the Ars Magus to defeat the Black Beast. The Ars Magus consumes Seether, sort of like a kind of fuel. Miss Lychee can teach you how the Ars Magus works and how to use it some other time. Anyway, during the war, the Black Beast spread Seether all over the world. The reasons were unknown, but the Black Beast could only operate within this Seether. Meow. Yeah. The Black Beast's power was overwhelming, so mankind tried to do everything they could to eliminate the Seether. They probably thought it would be safer and easier than fighting the beast directly. However, mankind failed at even that. After a while, the six heroes appeared, and the situation took a turn. That's how it's written in any textbook. The six heroes taught mankind the secrets of Magus. And from there, humans invented machinery that, machinery that can utilize the Seether as a sort of energy. After humans figured out how to use the Armagus, they fought alongside the six heroes and defeated the Black Beast. But after that happened, the surface of the planet was covered in Seether. What? In small doses, Seether is harmless to humans. But in large quantities, it has very negative side effects. I get it! That's why humans live in high elevation places! Right. Humans were forced to move to high-altitude areas and create cities there. That is where the hierarchical cities come from. 
I see. And now I'm one step closer to the ultimate vigilante.